2008, um, and that was a good 20, 20 years after, uh, after the war. Uh, it all came to a halt and I pulled uh, a gun. We hear the horror stories. We hear the 22 service members a day who commit suicide. Um, there's 50,000 veteran nonprofits in America and the problem is getting worse. My name is Stephen Cohn. I'm from central Pennsylvania, currently living in Budapest, Hungary, and I left the military as a sergeant. One does not go to war or even join the military uh, without it changing you in some way. We, we hear the horror stories. We hear the 22 so, uh, service members a day who commit suicide. Um, there's 50,000 veteran nonprofits in America and the problem is getting worse. Uh, I, I feel there's a lot of work to do and because it does change you and it makes you, well, let's, let's start with the big picture first. And I think that the one thing that we all can agree on, anyone who served at all, be it in combat or not, is that there was something bigger than us that we were serving. And we were willing to write a check, uh, a blank check for our lives. Uh, and I know I was. So that was something bigger than yourself. And you knew every step you took, everything you did was for this bigger mission. When you leave the military, that falls away. And you have to almost start over again. I got out, I was 27 years old. And uh, I had to start, I was like, it was like I was 18 again. I had no, no idea about the civilian world. And although I was in leadership positions in the military and I knew what I was doing, that didn't apply to the outside world. And I didn't work for government contractors, so I had to start over. I actually got out and stayed in Germany where I was stationed. I, I walked off base and stayed there. Um, and it, the way it changed me was, first of all, I, was, um, I knew that whatever I, that I made it through war, that I could make through civilian life. I knew that. That didn't stop the episodes um, that I had um, or that friends of mine had where we would get to man, you know, depress, depression or worry about where we were going and what we're doing on this planet and why we're even here and why we survived. These are all things that we ask ourselves all the time. In 2008, um, and that was a good 20, 20 years after, um, after the war, uh, it all came to a halt and I pulled um, a gun uh, out of a um, police officer's holster at a traffic stop and was gonna use it on myself this young female police officer stopped me uh, by gently placing her hand on my hand and then turning to me and said, I know you, this is not you. Uh, so they uh, let me go and I went home and although that shocked me, I was, I was done. Uh, I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, everything I tried, everything I did, everybody I knew, I just felt like an outsider. It didn't matter what I did, how I did it, where, how long I went, how much money I made, how high I rose. I was a you know, corporate executive. I had uh, you know, 3,500 3, people um, in, in my organization and uh, nine countries. So I was in a place where society said, hey, you should be happy. And I wasn't. I was, you know, I didn't feel good at all. So I went home, hung my uniform out. And you see, I reverted to my old identity of that soldier because that was the proudest moment in my life, is wearing that uniform. To that point, it was. And I kept my identity as a soldier, no matter where I went and what I did, which wasn't healthy, obviously. So I hung the, hung the uniform out. I took a picture of myself in uniform, put it under there, and pulled out a, a large marine uh, bayonet called a K-bar. And I put it to my neck, and I was going to slice my neck, and someone knocked at the door. And I was like, well, I can't even kill myself. What the hell is going on? You know, I, I was that frustrated. So I went to the door, ripped it open, like, what? And it was that young female police officer. And uh, she said, can I come in? And I'm holding the knife. And I said, sure. And she took my hand again and put it down on the counter and you know, walked me, led me into my own living room. And she said, you know, this, this is not you, I know you. Um, I had written a book in Germany before and it was a bestseller and she had been to one of my readings that I was, I was reading the book and she said, I know, I know you, this is not you. Uh, you're gonna be, um, a, you're a very loving man and you're gonna spread love a, 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 you know, across the planet uh, in years and you're gonna get married and have children. And I'm thinking, who is this? Like, what is going on here, you know? And she got up and gave me the German kiss kiss on each cheek and walked out. And uh, I stood there and said, what the hell is going, who, is this real? I, 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 I don't know if I had an out of body experience or if I completely lost it in that moment, but whatever she did stopped me from doing what I was gonna do. But I knew I wasn't safe. So I called my friend uh, Michael in Austria and I said, brother, you gotta come get me or I'm not gonna be here tomorrow. 
So I had a night alone where I did everything I could not to end it. And uh, it was really tough uh, because the thoughts are just so present and you're thinking about, I'm thinking about Sergeant Dillon and the other guys and, and gals out there. And at the time I was single, I had no one, you know, really besides my, my twin brother, my sister, my mother, and my father back in the States. And I said, well, you know, I, I guess no one's going to miss me anyway. So 